This screencast will show how to set up a desktop shortcut. This will come in handy when you're creating your Kindle ebooks from your manuscript. To, to give an example of it, what we're going to do is use, we're going to use Firefox. We're going to set up a shortcut that will start Firefox and open Firefox on the HTML version of your manuscript. First of all, we right click on a blank area of the desktop. Now I'll do that again. If your desktop, if you didn't have any free space on your desktop because you had windows open of one sort or another, you'd grab their title bar and move them down out of the way, or you'd click their minimize button to get them out of the way. You need to see some blank desktop. Right click, choose new, shortcut, click on that. Now we have a new shortcut. There are two things we're going to have to tell our shortcut. One is what program to run, and the other is what to run the program on. So in this case, the program we want to run is Firefox. If we knew the full path to Firefox, we could just type it right into this field. We could find the full path various ways. We can find the full path by clicking this Browse button. However, it might be easier to find the full path if you, if you open a file browser. Right-click here, choose Open Windows Explorer. I'm pretty sure the executable file name will start with Firefox. So I just type Firefox, and it's not going to find it because I was searching libraries. I should have been searching the, the entire computer. I'll click on local disk C, or I click on computer. Now I can type Firefox, and it finds several possibilities. It finds a folder. Well, that's not the one we want. We want an .exe file. Here it is. Firefox.exe is in C colon backslash program files Mozilla F Firefox. Now notice that program files has a space in the name. Mozilla Firefox has a space in the name. Now that we know where the executable file is, we could simply type it right here. Because it has spaces in the name, we would have to put the whole thing in quotation marks. Quotation mark C colon backslash program files. Notice I typed the space. In other words, I would type that whole path out and the firefox.exe. You don't have to type it this way. Instead, I'm going to erase that. You can find it using the Browse button. Now that we know generally where to look, I'm going to browse first of all on the computer, then on local disk C, then in the program files directory. Now, how, how do I know it would be program files? Because C, program files, and so on. So I click on program files, open that up. Now I'm looking for Mozilla Firefox. Here we go. So I, I click on that. I open it by clicking that. Oh, it's already open. OK. This expands or collapses the list of sub-files, subdirectories. Under Mozilla Firefox, we're looking for the file name firefox.exe. firefox.exe. So I click on that, and then I click OK. And it types it in the field for me, and it puts the quotation marks around it because of the spaces in the file names. OK, that's the first thing you have to specify. It is the program you want to run. Then I click Next, and I give the shortcut a, a name. I don't want to name it Firefox.exe. I want a shorter name. Just pick whatever name you want. I'm going to name it FF, standing for Firefox. Click Finish to create the shortcut. I click Finish. Now I have a shortcut on the desktop named FF. 
If I were to run it now by double clicking on it, it would just start Firefox. But I want it to do more than just start Firefox. I want it to open my manuscripts as, rendered as a, a web page. So I'm going to right click on this. I choose Properties. I want it to start in the directory that contains my manuscript file. So I have to find that directory. Now I happen to know that it's on local disk C. It's under Users, under my username, which is Frank. It's in my Novels directory. And it's in the directory named Stormy. So I highlight that by left clicking, and here are the contents of the directory name Stormy. And I'm looking, and I, I know that I named my file Stormy.html. Now let's let, instead let's use the new Stormy, new Stormy.html. Now that's the file that I want Firefox to open. So notice that I am showing the full path to that file here. I want to tell the shortcut to start in this directory named Stormy. So it's C colon backslash. You, you don't type computer. You start with the C colon. Backslash users. And this is showing me some possibilities. I don't actually have to type users. I can just select it here. Then I click and type a backslash. Shows me the next set of choices. Then I want the Frank directory. Here you'd pick your home directory. I left click. I type another backslash. Now I want the novels directory. So I look for that in the list. I have to scroll down a little. There it is, novels. So I left click there. I left click here, and I back type backslash once more because there's one more subdirectory named Stormy that I need to type. So I click there. That takes care of it. That's the, those are the directories, the full path of the directories to the directory that contains the file I'm interested in. So I say start in that directory so that when I say space new stormy dot html it will know where to find new stormy I'm going to make this I can't make it bigger I'll scroll back and forth here remember the file we want to run Firefox on, Firefox on is new stormy dot html in the directory stormy so here I've said, I'll go to the, I'm using the arrow keys to scroll left. The first part of this is the name of the program we want to run, Firefox.exe. Then I type at least one space, and then I type the name of the file I want to run the program on. The name of that file is newstormy.html. Now, why don't I put that in quotation marks also? Because that file name does not have any spaces. So here I have the two pieces that have to be in the shortcut if I want to run Firefox on a specific file. I have to have the name of the program, and I have to have the name of the file to run it on. I have to be sure that I've told it what directory to start running inside of. And that's all I need to do. I click on Apply. I click OK. Now I'm through with this, so I'll, I'll close the file browser. This particular version of Stormy is a very, very uh, abridged novel. This particular version only has a title. It doesn't have any other content. So let's start this by double-clicking it brings up Firefox, and it brings it up on my manuscript 
as an HTML file. Stormy, dot, stormy night. Now, of course, your novel would be a little longer than this, I hope. In fact, I have, I have another version of Stormy Night that's considerably longer than this. It's about 300 words long. Okay, so this started Firefox on that file. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, when you create your own ebook using the K Butler program, you will create both uh, a Mobi file that can be downloaded to a Kindle to read, and it also creates an HTML version that you can read right on your computer in your web browser. As you're writing your novel, you will probably make many changes to it. From time to time, you're going to want to look at the most recent version of your manuscript in a web browser or on your Kindle. So this sets a shortcut up to open it in the web browser. So let's suppose you have just rendered your manuscript into a Mobi file and to an HTML file. That would be done, by the way, with another desktop shortcut that, that you would have set up. You'd double click on that other shortcut, presto, you'd then have a new HTML version of your book, and you'd have a new Mobi version of your book. Let's suppose you don't want to go to the trouble of downloading it to your real Kindle, you just want to take a quick look in a web browser. You double click here, up comes Stormy Night. Up comes your, of course, you'd replace stormy, new stormy.html with the name of your manuscript. Well, that's how to do it. If you decide you've made a mistake with this shortcut, you can always right-click on it, choose Properties, and edit these fields. If you didn't have quite the right name, you can go in here and click on it and rename it. Now, later, suppose, let's cancel that because I don't want to make a change. It's just like I want it. Later, you write another novel. So you'd like one shortcut that opens Stormy. You'd like another shortcut that opens Windy. Well, I better remain, rename this. Right click, choose Rename. Type in your new name. Let's name it FF Stormy, which lets us know we're going to run Firefox on the Stormy book. Now, let's right click and drag that to the right, let go with the right mouse button, and choose Copy Here. This is going to be the shortcut for our new book named Wendy. So let's right click and, rena and rename it to begin with. We'll rename it to FF Wendy. Hit Enter. Now right click on it. Right click on it and choose Properties. Remember, this first part, Target, has to have two pieces. It has to have the program you're going to run which is the same for this one. It's still going to be Firefox. Then you have to have the name of the file you want to run the program on. In this case, it won't be newstormy.html. It'll probably be windy.html. I'm going to use the delete key and delete the rest of the old file name. So here's our new shortcut. See, we didn't have to set it up from scratch. We just right-clicked and dragged and copied, and then we just edited the minor difference. So now we have it set up to run wendy.html. Now, it might not be in the same directory. Hopefully, you have not put the Wendy manuscript in the same directory you put the Stormy manuscript. So let's suppose you had put it in the Wendy directory. Now, Windows probably won't let me save this because there isn't a Wendy man a directory at this moment. Let's click Apply. The folder Wendy does not exist. So let's leave this open. Let's go ahead and make that folder. I'll, I'll right click, open Windows Explorer. I'm going to go to that manuscript directory. Users, Frank, Novels, 
click on Novels. I have a number of novels, but none of them is named Wendy. So I'm going to right click here, choose New Folder, and I'll name it Wendy. And hit Enter. Now I have a folder named Wendy. Now it doesn't have an HTML file in it, but at least we have the folder. So let's see if we get it just a, a, a little further with this. Start in that. Now the folder exists. Let's click Apply. OK, it was happy. Click OK. Now I have the shortcut ready to run the Wendy Manuscript. Of course, there is no Wendy Manuscript in it. So I, I hope Firefox will give us an error when we double click here. Let's double click. Firefox. It couldn't find the file. Well, of course not. The file doesn't exist yet. My point here is to show how easy it is to create a similar shortcut once you've already created one. You just right-click, drag, choose Copy here. Then you go into it, renaming it and editing it, and you're done. All right, that's how to set up shortcuts on your desktop.